Uh, thanks for tuning in to Countdown. We are now going to be starting at, at around this time. So, pacey, half an hour, power packed show to get you all that's happened in the market, try and get you all that's happened in the market. And what's happened in the market is that the bank nifties come off from the highs of the day, 1.67%. This might be expiry leg. This might be also due to the fact that there is a weekend coming for us, whereas the world markets are not. And this might also be due to the fact that we've had a really good rally in the last few days. Four days on a trot now, we've had a stupendous uptake for financials at large and for the markets in particular. And therefore, this may very well be the case. So I, we'll ask our guests about what is their view. But very quickly, just want to mark what's happening in the indices and quickly on the Nifty 50, what's moved around. HUL has stayed low, 2.5% lower, 2174. Sun Pharma and Asian Paints are the other two which are sulking in trade. But look at the winners, Tata Motors on the news flow around how the Chinese ops are showing some promising signs. UPL on the debt reduction plans has done well. Hindalco is up 11% after Constellation reported the kind of numbers that they did. ONGC has gained a little bit on the crude bounce back. And by the way, IT is not sulking. HCL Tech is up about 9% at 535. So almost everything has done well is the limited point that I'm trying to make. At the broader end of the spectrum as well, might very help, will have some very interesting movers in the session today. So do watch out for um, the Nifty 500. Aside of the large caps, stocks like Navkar Corp up 11%, Shriyam Transport has bounced back, JSW Energy is up about 10%. There is some strength in Scient. Amans are checked in into that uh, counter yesterday. And amongst the losers, Hexa, where it gives up a few of its gains that it had marked in trade yesterday. Interesting. Morgan Stanley came out with a note which was uh, bullish on the numbers. And uh, in the future group stocks continue to sulk in the session yet again. But without much ado, let's get in our experts and um, start off with Dipan Mehta. A. Johnson right now needs an introduction. Dipan, good having you. Thanks so much for joining in. Uh, you reckon this is getting a bit stretched, this up move, or, or you would say, why not? Uh, things are starting to pick up around the world on the news flow. No, I think uh, this is a bear market rally, and uh, it may lose steam as early as next week. Uh, I, I'm certain positive news flow has come, but at the end of the day, we are still struggling with a lockdown, and domestically, the cases remain as high as they were a few weeks ago as well. And there is no coherent plan as to post-lockdown how economic activity will pick up. And the biggest unknown is consumer spending and consumer behavior. Uh, that is still not known in India or globally. So in the markets, I think, you know, they are rejoicing lower interest rates. And globally, markets are doing well. And to keep in mind, the trading volumes are also on the lower side. Uh, so we are seeing this kind of a move. But I'd be very, very skeptical. And in fact, such up moves, if they last for some more time, then they are good uh, you know, sort of situations to exit out of some of the weaker stocks, which will be impacted maximum in a post-coronavirus world. Hmm. Okay. Well, so Dipan Mehta, of course, classifies this as, uh, well, naturally so as a bear market rally. And I'm not surprised that anybody would say anything otherwise. But we'll get in some fundamental perspective on some of the big movers too. But quick comments from our experts on the derivatives and the technical side as well. It's expiry day, so therefore very important. Rahul Mohinder there first. Rahul, good having you. Thanks for joining in. This mammoth uptick that we've seen, what do you do now? We are in a holiday tomorrow, uh, so we'll come back straight on Monday. We've had four straight days. What do you do if you had trading positions? Uh, good afternoon. I think, Neeraj, the entire market seems to be uh, in a bit of a perplexed state looking at the ground reality versus what the market's doing. And, uh, you know, the way I put it is, again, this is something which is still not yet uh, categorized as breakout. So I concur with Vipan there that don't rush in and think that, you know, everything's over and we're going to be in a straight line rally up. Uh, I think the way to handle it from here is, A, we've got to keep in mind the two key support levels on the nifty spot, which I think would be 9,400 being the most major support now and 9,600 on the near term. I think if these levels breach for any reason, that's when uh, you know you should look at panic mode. But broadly, my expectation is over the next few days, we might get into a bit of a range-bound market between 9,400 to 10,000. So that's the way I'll kind of look at the immediate term or probably the uh, next few weeks, if I may put it that way. Okay, that's succinct and thanks so much, Rahul, for that. So that, that explains what Rahul Mohinder's trading strategy might be. Just wondering, Brijesh, are you doing anything different? Are you carrying home your long positions or are you booking profits? 
Prof, uh, no doubt, uh, regarding with the profit has been concerned, suppose someone has been long, I would be suggesting whether to book profit uh, since uh, long weekend has been there. No doubt the trend has been looking positive. The old, uh, as last when I have spoken, I was I have said the 9500 is a level which I would be watching very uh, crucially. I was looking at Nifty in the range of 8800 on a downside that range, uh, or the base has been shifted from on the higher side, but that was somewhere at 9000 or 9100. And 9500 was been acting as a resistance. Now since today we have seen, uh, or, or or I would be say, saying uh, tomorrow, uh, yesterday we have seen Nifty breaking 9500. We have moved up, and today a session there is a gap of. Uh, um, uh, gap of opening or I would be say, saying that runaway gap has been formed and still the momentum is on the higher side. But still, um, uh, I would be concluding what Rahul has said. The only thing is that the, uh, 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 the support I would be looking very keenly now would be 9500. We should not break this 9500. And anyhow, if we break then 9250 would be the next level to work very keenly. So um, again, 9500 on the downside followed by 10,000 on the higher side would be the range. Uh, for the next leg of consolidation and and uh, but don't be aggressive right now. Uh, I would be suggesting because a time cycle series has a as a uh, third May to fifth May uh, might be a reversal. So better to be a little bit lighter on a, on a lighter side uh, than being aggressive on the stock. Right. Okay. So what about specific stocks, Rahul Moinder? Any stocks that you're recommending? I think uh, visibly there are two very clear breakouts. Let's start with Gale. I'm looking at targets of 101 coming on Gale with a stop loss of 91. Another one which uh, interests me from a breakout perspective is Hindalco. Uh, here we're looking at 138 target, keeping 122 stop. Mind you, these stocks have also exhibited a breakout from key averages on intraday time frames. As, uh, as well as, uh, you know, a, a rising volume performance. So I think on both fronts, these stocks would qualify as near-term bets. Mm. And Indalco has some positive tailwind of news flow around it as well. We'll ask Dipan about it. But Prijesh, very quickly, your stock ideas. Both on the long side, uh, Neeraj, the first call which I, uh, long side is from our auto pack, that is TVS motor. Uh, uh, reversal has been seen, volume breakout has been witnesses. 328, the stock has been quoting. So, present rate can be used to go along with the stock of 318. Play for the target 345 to 350. Time frame would be a 2 to 3 training session. Another call would be from an oil, oil and gas pack that is in petrol, is looking uh, bullish on the chart. In a shorter term time frame, a reversal has been there. So, somewhere around 217, the stock has been quoting. Present rate can be used to go along with the strict stop of 210 and play for the target of 217. Time frame would be a couple of sessions. Mm. Okay. Uh, Dipan, I, I, I bear in mind your skepticism or uh, circumspectedness, let me put it that way, about this move. I wonder if you would hold that same thought for some of the globally exposed autos or auto angs. I mean, Madhusan Sumi's commentary when they spoke to us two weeks back about the China lockdown opening and what they're experiencing there, Tata Motors announcement coming today and the market is giving them thumping rewards. Do you reckon that that piece could continue functioning well? No, not really. In fact, uh, I think that we are better off buying domestic focused businesses, uh, pharma, healthcare, SMPG, and even beaten down banking. Because globally, I think the economy may take more knocks than in India as well. And right now, I think everybody is rejoicing that there has been some starting of operations uh, nowhere near close to what the levels were there earlier. And that cannot be the reason to tank up on these companies. Uh, there are structural changes taking place globally for the auto industry. And uh, I think that uh, companies like Madhusan Sumi and Tata Motors, which were anyway quite stressed prior to coronavirus crisis, I fail to understand how they will prosper and thrive in a post-coronavirus uh, scenario when there will be even more stress on the global economy. If you go back to preview prior to COVID-19, Madhusan Sumi was anyway uh, beaten, being beaten down because of global slowdown in, in car volumes, passenger car volumes. And Tata Motors was struggling in terms of uh, selling the Jaguars globally. So how is it going to change so significantly whenever the lockdown globally uh, goes off? So I think these are uh, nice bear market rallies. I wouldn't do that short covering as well. And investors who are stuck in both these companies, which have lost a lot of value over the past uh, two, three years, these are good opportunities to kind of get out, get into some of the safer havens, and then just wait patiently for uh, 
uh, that trade to play out. Hmm. Nipan, the other thing is this announcement by UPL on um, the debt reduction plans. And what are your thoughts here? The stock is up a healthy 17% as we speak. But what did you make of the announcement? No, I think that was one of the concerns in UPL, considering the acquisition they did, the risk acquisition, that was a big one. And I think any kind of debt reduction is certainly being welcome. I think if you look at a lot of what the experts are saying globally, is they want to focus on companies which have a lot of cash on their books and less debt. And that they feel is a more uh, secure business at this point of time. No doubt there's a lot of liquidity, but interest costs and uh, chances of, uh, of debt-related problems is what keeps the investors a bit nervous. So if any company is looking at debt reduction, then it will be rewarded. And we saw that uh, amplified in Reliance Industries where there were earlier concerns that now with the oil prices, the way they had fallen, how the company would manage to reduce its debt. So I think uh, something similar will play out in a lot of other companies which have got uh, high debt. And I would even add Aurobindo Pharma to that list, which has got significant debt. And now with Sandoz not being acquired, uh, they will also focus on reducing their debt and interest uh, liability. So there are such opportunities uh, for companies which have done massive expansions and uh, large acquisitions. And now, I think uh, when um, the scenario that they are in at present, they will use their cash flows to pay down the debt and make the balance sheet more lean and fit. Because there is no denying that going forward, life is not going to be easy for the next few quarters or so. And uh, companies need to tighten their belt, lower their cost, reduce their break-even point, improve their profit margins, uh, learn to operate on a, on a lower uh, scale of operation with lower capacitization. And lower debt uh, will certainly help under such situations. Mm. Depend, uh, so the other other quick question uh, that I have, <laughs> UPL has gone berserk now, 17%, as you, of course, marked out there as well. This uh, Constellation News and, and, and thereby this move on Hindalco that we're seeing as well, uh, again, globally exposed businesses, I'm guessing you would stay away? Yeah, that's right, but... Hindalco has been strategically planning its uh, journey very well. Uh, from gone are the days where it was focused only on LME aluminum prices. Now it is more of a value-added uh, products company. It has done uh, intelligent acquisitions, and those acquisitions have played out really well for Hindalco. And my sense is that along with other global businesses, uh, which we may share in a post-coronavirus world, I think Hindalco will go on that path. But eventually, I think when things get back to normal, I do feel that Hindalco will be a different company from what it was three, four years ago. And investors will certainly appreciate that fact and uh, try and, uh, you know, uh, increase the price to earnings multiple. At this point of time, on a console basis, it is very attractively priced, I think, uh, at or below book value. And those single-digit fee multiples, which one would ascribe to a commodity type of a business, but large parts of volumes and profits are now come on, coming from non-commodity type businesses, especially aluminum rolling, which find application in packaging, which find application in automobiles, and uh, the acquisition certainly has been value attractive. So while it is a global business, I think there is something transformative happening over there, uh, which may give higher returns to investors. Okay, uh, let's take in some queries as well that have come in, uh, and we'll try and make this quick. So, Pravandan Chand is asking for a short-term view on Lupin. So, I'm guessing this is a technical view that is being asked by Pravandan Chand. Remember, Pharma is active. Lupin has got some news flow surrounding it as well today. Rahul Mohinder, any any short-term views that you have on Lupin? Yeah, if you look at the uh, near term, you know, even though the stock's been a bit negative uh, on a day like today, and this is more uh, probable because of the basic shift uh, that you're seeing, there's a lot of draw coming into all those stocks that declined quite a bit. The way I'm going to address Lupin is uh, this could be a good opportunity to, uh, you know, look at entering with a clean stop loss at about 795. So the stock uh, at about 835, keep a stop at 795. Uh, if the market, uh, you know, if, if Lupin breaks 795, I think then only will we see some kind of a, 
of a downslide. But, you know, otherwise, we have targets on Lupin uh, at about 930 to 940. And uh, we would expect this to come over the next month. So if that's the kind of horizon you're chasing, I think it's, it's definitely wise to consider this uh, as a clear buy or a hold opportunity. Okay. Well, uh, I think Chandrasekhar uh, R is asking about a lot of other pharma stocks as well. Reddy's, Glenmark, DB's. I'll combine a loop in there too. Depend fundamentally, uh, any of these pharma names excite you? Does the industry excite you right now after the run-up that we've seen already? Yeah, I think pharma will be in reckoning for many more quarters. And uh, pharma companies are a safe place to hire at this point of time. Uh, a lot of them have shades of FMG, FMCG type of uh, consumption-oriented uh, uh, business models, which will not get impacted by a global slowdown in consumption spending. I think healthcare spending is going to remain uh, vibrant and perhaps even increase. So demand for pharmaceutical companies will remain uh, at, a, at an even keel. At the same time, I think that uh, post-coronavirus world, we may see lesser uh, regulation or rather I would say lesser oversight or slightly more lenient approach by the U.S. FD. I think initial announcement over the last few weeks does suggest that. And that may remove a, a major risk factor, at least in the medium term, for these pharma companies as they scale up their operations. And at the same time, I think that uh, uh, globally also, I think there's going to be more and more demand uh, post this uh, particular crisis which we are facing. And Indian pharmaceutical companies will certainly benefit uh, from that position. Our preference would be for companies which have a sizable domestic business as well because that insulates them from uh, U.S. generics, uh, any further price cuts over there. So companies like, say, Alchem Laboratories come to mind, which usually disclose that we and our clients are invested. It's got a good uh, U.S. business and a sizable domestic operation as well. And uh, that could benefit. And among the really inexpensive stocks is Aurobindo Pharma, where I think uh, that post uh, the approval for the EIR for, for Unit 4, which was a major overhang for the stock, not down that no longer exists, I think this stock can do pretty well over the next few quarters or so. Okay, so that's the view on pharma. What else? Uh, let's just uh, get in some more uh, queries going. There is a question from Dylan Soero uh, for a view on United Spirits. I think the liquor companies and the taxes that Rajasthan has raised, maybe some of the others raised too. I just wonder if the charts get spoiled a little bit as a result of this. Brijesh, any thoughts on United Spirits? Very quickly. Uh, it's been hitting the range of 511 or downside, followed by 545, 547 on the higher side. Still looking the chart uh, for a very short term time frame is still promising. But at 536, I would be avoiding if it trades below. 530, definitely one can take a long position with the stop loss of 515, pay for a target of 545. If we are giving closing of 545, then 570 would be the next level to watch. Okay, Rahul Mohinder, there is a view on India cement. Cement stocks have been active because of ACC, Ambuja, and etc. But India cements on the charts? Again, I think it's a very different answer for someone trying to look at India cements uh, from a long term standpoint versus a short term standpoint. Uh, I am still a bit skeptical if you're looking at the uh, longer term sense on this stock. I would say that uh, short term you may continue to see uh, some strength, another 4 or 5%. But again, this is not a point to enter uh, the stock in my opinion. I would stay away from the sector actually. At this point, there are much better bets available. Okay, uh, one final question, uh, Dipan Mehta, before we let you go. is so, uh, Are you staying away from investing fresh money currently or is there something that you like? No, no, yes. Staying completely as of investing fresh money. Of course, you can always turn your portfolio to position itself uh, better given uh, all the challenges which we are facing, but fresh investments are completely on hold. Okay, Deepan, uh, we'll let you go on that note. Thank you so much for taking Thank the you. time out with us. Appreciate your time. By the way, the other stock that is doing remarkably well is Bharti Airtel. It's picked up a lot of steam, 4% higher, 515 and counting. Rahul Mohinder, this was quiet the whole of last three days. I've been wondering why is it that Bharti Airtel is under a bit of sluggishness? I think it bounced back very smartly from 485, up about 4% today. Can it do more? Uh, definitely. I think the way this stock has uh, moved up, uh, you know, and, and also, again, what we have to watch is this is a market where you've got to carefully look at 
uh, stocks that are also going up with uh, an incline in volume. And, and, you know, this is definitely one of those stocks. Probably today's volume will land up being one of the highest volumes it's seen in the last two or three weeks. So, uh, you know, definitely above average in terms of volume. So it's a good breakout. I, I still think this is one of those stocks which will continue to uh, tread forward. Uh, you know, near term, the next resistance and target could be set anywhere around 535 to 540. Uh, you know, definitely hold on to the stock. Keep a clear stop loss, even if you're a longer-term investor. Uh, if the stock reaches 485, that's a very important level, uh, I believe. But again, this is one of those stocks which uh, we believe should continue to outperform. Mm. Okay. Well, maybe a request for closing strategies, and then we'll try and get in what dealing rooms are recommending in the session today as well. Uh, Brijesh, if you had to bet on one stock for close, it could be a repeat of what you just gave at 3 o'clock, or your one convincing... BTST or STBT? Sriram so Transport is looking good for the BTST. 787, 788 has been quoting. Keep a stop loss of 740, play for the target of 820. Okay, what about you, Rahul Mohinder? A coal India, definite name that comes to my list. Today's volume again lands up being probably the highest volume it's seen all month. So single day, very high volume, uh, well above its average. We are looking at near-term uh, targets on this one at around 156. I'd buy Coal India, keeping a stop loss below the 146 level. Mm. Okay. Well, so do watch out for those uh, uh, names. Uh, those are some top ideas. Coal India is something, I, I think Rahul Mohinder is going towards all economy in a big way. Indalco was one idea. Coal India is something that he likes as well. So do watch out for those names. You know, a stock that uh, uh, Tata Motors has moved up 20%, something that else that has uh, also moved, but not in the same vein, is Madhusan Sumi, up about 8%. If you know, globally exposed auto names should do well, these should also. Rahul, any thoughts on Madhusan Sumi? So this is a, you know, in my opinion, a long-term portfolio stock, uh, even at these uh, points. So I, I feel that, you know, this is a stock I would continue to remain invested. I've been uh, fairly confident about uh, Madison, uh, even when the stock declined. So uh, from a long-term standpoint, I don't think this is very worri worrisome. But, you know, that, that also comes to the point that a lot of auto stocks like Tata Motors, which you just talked about, have had this sudden 20% run-up, including the likes of this Madison Sumi. These stocks could definitely see sudden corrections. You know, I wouldn't be surprised uh, if you see another 10 or 12% off from these levels. So if you're trying to chase the short term, this is not a prudent point to come in. But uh, the reason I continue to like Madhusan Sumi, look at the volumes of yesterday, 29th April, probably the highest we've seen uh, in many, many months. We haven't had a single day with this kind of volume. So there's there's definitely a lot of money chasing this at these levels. So I'm clearly going to uh, recommend a buy. Okay, definitely recommending a buy. I think we just lost that line, but he's definitely recommending a buy on Madhusan Sumi as well. So do watch out for that stock too. What else? I'm just trying to pick up some uh, smaller names and try and see if they are active too. Uh, so from the BSE small cap space, uh, uh, by the way, what about Madhus, uh, Manapuram and Muthut? Uh, there's a story on BloombergQuin.com. I urge viewers to go and read that up on uh, increased demand for gold loans possibly. Brijesh, any thoughts on the charts of Madhusan or Muthut? Manapuram is, uh, is looking good on the chart still. You know, um, the stock um, after 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 making a base of 113, now it has moved up, uh, quoting at 134. So if presently someone is looking to play long in it, then 122 and 120 are the two important support levels. So for for a medium term, then keep a stop below 122. For a very short term, keep a stop below 128. Present rate or any dip to 132 can be used to go long. Whereas on the higher side has been concerned, stock has a resistance at 142 to 145. We are, if we are giving closing over 145, then the next level to watch will be 168. So I am betting till 145 with the stock of the 128. Hmm. Okay. Uh, Motilal Oswal asset management is up about 8% in the session today. I think AMC stocks too, by and large, have not done too badly for themselves. Uh, any thoughts here, Brijesh? Motilal Oswa. The overall stock had made a base at around 450 or 11. Now it's been consistent. It's now trying to move up. And in today's session, we have seen volume, uh, uh, average volume uh, trading above that. 
So definitely, if someone wants to play for a medium-term time frame, then keeping a stop of the 440 present rate or any dip till 500 can be used to go long. Stop had a minor resistance in the zone of uh, 545 to 550. We are able to surpass this level of 545 on a closing basis. 620 would be the next level to work. So for the medium-term bet, definitely uh, one can play on it uh, uh, at the present rate or any dip. Mm. Okay, uh, so those are a couple of things. We, yeah, waiting numbers uh, from Reliance Industries as well as Tech Mahindra. And by the way, watch out for HUL as well. That stock on the results day is uh, down, not as uh, low as uh, maybe uh, some of the other few losers. Because, but on a day like this, when the market is up 3%, HUL is down about a percent and a quarter. So be mindful of that. Rahul Moinder, quick thought on the two result boys before we start wrapping up. Uh, quick ones, uh, Reliance Industries and HUL. See, HUL, you know, I cannot recommend this uh, as a fresh entry. I would not uh, suggest buying into the stock. Uh, and if you're looking at Reliance, I still think the momentum will continue. It's probably going to be one of those stocks which will, uh, you know, show the way to the index. But again, if you're a shorter term trader, keep in mind 1420, a very important support on Reliance Industries level breaks. That should be a clear stop. That could be a potential change in trend. But my, my suggestion would be to remain long on the stock. There's no such negative signal. It's one of those charts where you have both the daily and the intraday frames looking sturdy and positive, all backed with good volumes that got clocked in in the last week of trading as well. So fairly comfortable staying long on this one. Okay. Well, that's uh, sound advice. Gentlemen, stay on. We'll take in some final thoughts from you before we wrap up this show. But let's start wrapping up the markets because uh, we are about 3% higher for the indices and it's a remarkable pullback. Actually, may I skip my market check for a bit? Uh, we'll keep it short. But I'm interested in the index trade too. For somebody who went long on the nifty at the start of the week, Raul in a quick 30 seconds because it's 328 already. Would you recommend taking home the longs? I would recommend taking home the longs, but squaring it up closer to about 10,000. That's where the big resistance is. Definitely keep a stop loss. Uh, you know, if you're very short term, 9750 could be a stop. But uh, otherwise, I think 9650 is a more reasonable stop to work with. Okay, and Brijesh, same question. 30 seconds, Brijesh. Bank Nifty, if somebody was long, carry home or square? Uh, keeping a stop of 21,100, one can take a long position, but 21,650 would be the resistance zone. If we are surpassing, then 21,800 would be the next level to watch. Appreciate, gentlemen. Stay on. We'll take in closing thoughts, but here's how the markets are shutting shop. Fabulous moves. I mean, Tata Motors up about 20%. Uh, there is some strength in UPL of about 14% today. Tanta, JSW, Hindalco, I mean, the metals index is looking lip smacking today. Coal India is up about six and a half. Bharti Infratel has gained about 7%. And IT is not far behind, by the way. TCS, Infosys, like the works, everything has done really well for itself. What is not doing well? Sun Pharma, two and a half. HUL about a percent and a half. Sipla about a percent. So those are two or three names that have slightly come off. You know, I must say, not all portfolios would have gained as much because not too many people would have locked themselves in into some of these financials or metals, to be honest. And just looking at a clutch of names which have done well and clutch of names which haven't. So let me talk about the losers first. Alkyl Amines, yesterday, remember we were talking about this stock. It's down about 6% in the session today. Quite a sharp pullback. And frankly, Specialty Chemicals, RT, Vinati, etc., all of them have taken a back seat. Deepak Nitride is down about a percent. So there's been a bout of profit booking that we've seen in all of these specialty chemical names. Uh, so do be mindful of that. And the future group stocks have looked slightly wobbly as well. Hexaware has looked about 5% lower. So that's the other one which is correcting. But what has done well? Well, a lot of them. Dixon Tech up about 9%. I wonder if back-end manufacturers are firmly in focus. You can't not have Tata Motors DVR do well and the Tata Motors stock has done well. So Tata Motors DVR is up about 16%. Uh, there is strength in Shidam Transport up about 13%. I think it was Brijesh's top idea. Um, now Car Pop up about 11%. Uh, Scient about 10% higher. Bharat Forge, Ashok Leland, Motherson Sumi, Motilal Oswal, 
Fortis Healthcare, a clutch of names have done just so well for themselves. Interglobe Aviation is up about 8% in trade. So this is purely market momentum that has led some of these stocks higher as well. Uh, be mindful, some of these business fundamentals have not changed. If anything, they've only deteriorated. But the market mode, of course, carry, the tide is carrying all boats along with it, so to say, except for a few which haven't done well. Uh, and by the way, uh, as I said, the AMCs have done well by and large because India Nippon, which is uh, Reliance, the erstwhile Reliance RNAM, is also up about 14%. There's some strength in a, in, in a uh, Dilip Buildcon, some strength in Kalpaturu Power, Ashoka Buildcon, etc. All of them are doing rather well for themselves. Okay, final thoughts uh, from our experts. Uh, Rahul, in light of this, you already gave us the belief that people should stay long on the index. I'm just wondering, as an outer side, what, what do you think will lead the markets higher from here? No, I think I'm going to take a few uh, global macro cues as well. Like, you know, I, I was looking at charts of, let's say, the dollar index, crude oil. I think these have started showing signs that, you know, the bottoms uh, have locked in and, you know, the mass, you know, things like crude should probably be uh, going higher up. You know, I'm talking about NYMEX crude with uh, a stop loss below 15 or it could be a trade. And, you know, my own sense is that, you know, this could be a leading indication Plus, if you look at stocks, we, we were talking about autos just a few minutes back. You look at, say, something like a Maruti. Uh, you know, it's clocked volumes higher than it's clocked in the last 10 odd days. You know, so definitely today's there's a lot of money that's moved in. There's a there's a, a paradigm shift, if I may put it that way, uh, in the way people are assessing this breakout and the very fact that the Nifty is above 9600. Uh, and maintained all day above it was was heartening. So I think this could well be a breakout. I may be early on it. Uh, I know the practical aspects of, you know, the whole COVID-19 situation may not uh, necessarily make things add up, but this is how the way markets behave in extreme circumstances, and we've got to accept and move on with it. Okay. What about you, Brijesh? If, uh, uh, for me, I would be saying that definitely Nifty today has maintained with the uh, with the runaway sort of gap and then and, and the close of the day high. But uh, there would be a profit booking. 99.50 would be the first resistance zone, and the second would be 10,140. But that doesn't mean the trend has been over for the bull side. Trend, trend is still been intact. Two level on the downside should be one very carefully. There is one 95.100, and another level would be 92.50 zone. But till 95 doesn't break on the closing basis, I would be testing buy on this strategy. Chances are that we um, uh, might see 10,100 or say 10,150 in, in, in coming days. Third to fifth of May is a reversal day, which I would be watching very keen. If we are surpassing this level, then definitely Nifty is ready for the new, uh, new zone. Hmm. Okay, gentlemen, we'll leave it at that. Thanks so much for taking the time out and being with us and giving us your thoughts. Really appreciate your time today. Have a good weekend. And viewers, before we wrap up, I just do want to uh, bring out uh, one more market voice uh, and I'll just read it out. Uh, I think it's Pratik Agarwal, yes. Pratik Agarwal of ASK Investment Managers, who we spoke to earlier, said that the Q1 earnings season would be unprecedented. However, in a scenario like this, there are uh, bullish signs or straits that he sees in sectors like insurance and asset management companies and specialty chemicals. Here are what he had to say. Have a good weekend. Yeah, so this space uh, is actually looking more attractive than before. Uh, general insurance uh, actually uh, comes out as a winner. Uh, there is no damage to the balance sheets uh, and the business outlook uh, improves. Uh, in the immediate term, the motor claims would be lower because people are staying indoors. Uh, yes, regulator has not given the premium increase this year, but I think in spite of that, uh, that business uh, would have lesser claims and hence uh, profitability would be higher. Second, because of the times, the health insurance piece, which is a fast-growing piece, will grow probably faster and is uh, very profitable. So uh, that piece for general insurance companies uh, could drive growth in future. So outlook for uh, this business definitely improves. If we go to life insurance businesses, there is some damage to the balance sheet. Solvency ratios move down a tad. 
mainly because of crack in uh, asset prices debt and equity but uh, business outlook improves uh, you know uh, people will want more of life insurance maybe less of ulips but more of uh, life insurance which again is a very high on uh, profitability part of business so uh, overall these two uh, the insurance space i would say uh, in terms of business outlook Uh, wins uh, in this kind of a scenario uh, mutual funds uh, we can categorize them into two uh, you know uh, funds which uh, were perceived to be riskier on debt side uh, for one reason or the others uh, you know just like it is happening in banks where people are pulling out monies from uh perceived higher risk banks and moving them into perceived lower risk banks same thing is being experienced in mutual funds uh you know people don't want to risk their uh money is in a debt kind of an asset class uh, if they sense any risk they're pulling that out putting it into uh funds where risk perception is uh, lower so uh you know uh, for the larger fund houses i would say debt Does contribute 30-35% of total profits. Uh, you know the the house which is getting in a lot of flows uh, could see that uh, percentage move up significantly given that equities are uh, down today.